In today's video, I am very, very proud to be presenting our preliminary winter forecast for the winter of 2025 to 2026. This is the video that I anticipate the most every single year, so I'm super excited, as I'm sure most of you are as well, we're going to be going into the precipitation forecast, the temperature forecast, the snowfall forecast, and the very exciting overall forecast at the end. Before we dive into things, be sure to comment your location down below, like the video, subscribe, and I will be giving you a custom forecast for your location as long as you do all three of those things. Now, without Further ado, let's just get into things. And first things first, we're diving into the temperature forecast. Now, it's important to note the ENSO. That is the El Nino Southern Oscillation. So typically, you either have an El Nino or a La Nina. But this year is very interesting and probably the most rare out of the three possibilities. And we are actually in a neutral ENSO, uh, leaning La Nina. So it's, it's very close to the middle of the two. And... Typically, these bring some of the coldest and snowiest winters historically. This is the best phase to be in, and it's actually the rarest phase to be in as well. Uh, we're going to get a little bit of both effects at times, so it is going to make the forecast a little interesting. We'll dive into that later on. Another factor to note before we really, really get into it is the warm waters we have out there in the Pacific. And that can bring a lot of warm air onshore to the western states we call that a positive pna when that effect develops what it does in turn is it forces the cold air from the arctic region straight into the central and eastern states and i expect that to be a huge effect this upcoming winter so we have the above normal temperatures out west this is our first shade of three it's not based on the amount of above average temperatures it's more based on our confidence and speaking of that, we actually have a second shade of these above normal temperatures as well out there in the West. We are very confident in this because we already know that those waters offshore are extremely warm. So it is highly unlikely that this does not play a role in the Western states. And because of that, we even have a third layer of these above normal temperatures, our highest possible confidence for those western areas. This is perhaps the warmest I have ever seen the North Pacific going into a winter ever. So this is the most confident I could possibly be in this type of effect taking place. And as we mentioned earlier, the effect that that would have on the central and eastern states is cooler than normal conditions being thrusted down from Canada and the Arctic region straight into the central and eastern states. And that is why from the plains eastward we expect below normal temperatures. But of course, this is only our first layer. So let's go ahead and take a look at where that second layer is going to be located. And the answer is most of the areas in here. Because we're so confident in that warmth out west, we are equally as confident in the cold, in turn, moving towards the east. So that is why we're seeing high confidence on this temperature forecast. So high, in fact, that we even have our third shade here for parts of the Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, and the interior mid-Atlantic and interior northeast, where we feel very confident that there will be below normal temperatures. Now, of course, this is a three-month forecast from December 1st all the way until the end of February, so this does not mean that from start to finish it's going to be cold every single day. It just means that the majority of that three-month period, or 90-day period approximately, is going to be below normal, so keep that in mind as well. Now, that's one part of the equation, but let's move into the precipitation. And typically, in an El Nino or La Nina, for instance, La Nina, we would have these drier conditions out here in the southwest, but you would have above average precipitation for uh, a large chunk of this area in the northwest. We obviously don't see that large of an above average area because, again, we're in a neutral ENSO. This is very different. Uh, the opposite is true in an El Nino, where typically you get a little bit drier up here in the northwest, and you actually see most of those storms moving into the southwest. This year, I do expect this dry effect to take place not only for the southwest, but actually as far eastward as the four corner states and southern plains. I think that this storm track through here is going to be, for the most part, shut down, similar to a lot of last winter. Uh, I do think that we could get some coming over the top, but I think overall a slower uh, pattern is going to be uh, most likely, not only due to that neutral ENSO, but also the fact that we are going to have a lot of warm temperatures and 
pretty much higher pressure in this area that could just deflect the storms way up into Canada. That could take effect a lot of the winter as well. Because of that, we're actually highly confident in this below normal precipitation there in that southwest area. Not third shade confident, but second shade confident at least. So for areas in California, straight through Nevada into the four corner states, and even bits of Oklahoma and Texas, we do expect a pretty dry winter ahead. Now, let's take a look at where we expect above average precipitation. And again, I don't expect a full-blown La Nina, you know, really far above average precipitation pattern up there in the Northwest, but I do expect a marginally above average precipitation pattern to take place. And a lot of storms and active periods will take place in this Northwest area, in my opinion. So definitely, we're going to be on the lookout for that. Um, I think that a lot of these will move straight through the plains and Midwest and maybe even into the northeastern states at times. I think that we will have a lot of clippers because those storms that get deflected up into Canada will likely come down with the jet stream into that trough in the eastern states. So we'll see a lot of activity in here. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, but also, I think a lot of these storms will be deflected more southward and we could have some kind of creeping northward. We did see a lot of this last winter as well, where the Gulf states and the eastern states, especially the southeast, got very, very active. Now let's take a look at that second shade. The first area here is going to be the Great Lakes or lake effect type systems. Uh, also, there will be quite a bit of clippers moving through, like I mentioned. And then the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast is kind of the convergence of a lot of this because we have the storms moving in from the west. And we also have those storms moving in from the south. So I think that it's safe to say we're likely to have above average precipitation in that northeastern corner of the nation. Speaking of the lakes, they are highly above normal as far as sea surface temperatures. And as we know, lake effect snowfalls often caused, well, all the time caused, by those really warm waters and then brutal cold air moving right over top of them. Again, we saw that earlier on last winter. We've seen that frequently over the years, obviously. And I think that this could be a really, really big lake effect year. We have some record high temperatures there in the lakes. So definitely going to be a factor. As we keep going towards our next frame, we have another area that is above average. Montana, Wyoming, the Dakotas, and even into Minnesota, where again, we're going to get some of these storms moving in through the Pacific Northwest, and we're also going to have some clipper systems moving down into this area. And that's again going to be a pretty busy area storm-wise. Now with all of that, now we've seen the, the temperatures, the precipitation, it's time to dive into the snowfall chance forecast. Now, this isn't a standard uh, snowfall forecast, if you will. We've been doing it this way for years now, so some of my old viewers will be more familiar, but I'll explain it real quickly. This is your above or below average chance of snowfall based on my precipitation and temperature forecast. This does not mean that you are guaranteed to see snowfall or that you're guaranteed to see above average snowfall. Let's say you're in, for instance, LA here, where we have below average snowfall. Obviously, they have like a 1 in 100 chance of seeing even flakes, maybe even 1 in 1,000. But technically, that is a chance, and technically, it's going to be an even lower chance than that, in my opinion. The same thing is going to go for Miami, the Florida Keys, South Texas, areas that typically do not expect to see snowfall by any means. We're still giving that chance forecast. With all that being said, below average in those areas where obviously we expect above average temperatures and below average precipitation, that will lead to below average snowfall chance quite obviously. Even the second shade, of course, here for a lot of these areas where it is going to be likely warmer for most of the winter and much drier. I think even if cold air does move in at times, we're going to struggle to get storm systems here. Now, as we take a look at the above average snowfall, it makes sense that a lot of these above average precipitation areas in the Northwest will be included, especially the mountainous areas, because there is above average temperatures, of course, here for Washington and Idaho that we expect. But for those mountaintop locations, they're so high up that above average temperatures might mean, you know, 15 degrees instead of 10. Uh, it's still going to create snowfall either way. So a lot of those higher mountains, this isn't going to play as big of a role. Uh, precipitation does carry more weight in this overall than the temperatures do. We do see that pretty much the entire eastern half of the nation is in the above average snowfall chance, and that is due to mostly below average temperatures and a lot of these areas seeing above average precipitation. We do have a couple of second shades to go over, so let's start out here 
in this area that we noted earlier where there could be some clipper systems, some Pacific systems, I do expect this area to quite easily see above average snowfall, mostly Montana and the Dakotas there. Now we have a much larger second area, and this is going to be for the Great Lakes, for reasons mentioned earlier, with those lakes looking to be very active. The northeast with well above average precipitation, multiple storm tracks that can bring storms into there, and also below average temperatures expected. And then again, these further southeast areas and Gulf state areas, as well as southern Florida, there's going to be more storm systems moving through. There's going to be below average temperatures. So we might have another year like not quite like last year, right, with tons and tons of snowfall because that was just way, way, way above average. But this might be one of those years where these areas do get shots at snowfall in the deep south, probably more in terms of just seeing flakes or a dusting or a couple of inches for some of these areas. And that is a rare occurrence, but last year will probably never happen again in our lifetime with, you know, uh, New Orleans seeing like a foot of snowfall in the Florida Panhandle. Can't call for anything like that, but definitely could be one of those years where these areas get in on a little bit of snowfall, perhaps. Now, finally, let's talk about the overall forecast. And before we really get into it, be sure to subscribe, like the video, leave that location comment down below, and I will be giving you a more in-depth custom uh, forecast underneath your comment. So be sure to do those things. We also have so many more seasonal videos coming up. We do... A uh, very specific snowfall forecast. We do fall foliage. We're going to be doing all sorts of stuff. Also, our fall forecast just came out yesterday, so you can check that out. Let's get into this, though, and we start out with the southwest, where we do expect things to be very dry. There's not a lot of area for me to write on. Obviously, it's going to be warmer as well, but I think the dryness is going to be a little bit more noticeable. Uh, definitely going to be one of those years where precipitation is pretty hard to come by over the course of the winter. In the northwest, much milder as far as temperatures are concerned. And then for the Rockies, obviously there's multiple different sections and we have different forecasts for different areas. But I think overall for the Rockies, it'll come out to around average um, for, for most of these areas. Obviously, the further north in the Rockies, I expect more precipitation. So probably a better chance at above average snowfall up there. The southern Rockies, it's going to be a little bit drier and harder to come by. Now, cold and snowy just to the east of the Rockies, oftentimes these Rocky Mountains act as a kind of barrier between the air masses. So while we have warmer, milder air moving up the western side of those mountain ranges, we're likely to have a lot of rich cold air uh, moving straight down the eastern side of them. And that should lead to cold and snowy conditions for a lot of the winter. And that's saying something because that's compared to what's already typical because it's already usually cold and snowy for many of these areas but that's going to be probably even more evident this year. I think that this year, similar to last year and similar to 2014, could feature one, if not more, polar vortex events with severely below normal temperatures here for areas of the northern plains and upper Midwest. Definitely going to play a role. Arctic blasts, you know, you're not going to be in the heart of the polar vortex, likely further south here in the Ohio Valley and uh, kind of like lower Midwest areas, but definitely... Uh, still going to pack a punch with those Arctic blasts coming down. Now, this one always takes some explaining, but our winter battle zone area there across some of your more middle areas is where I do expect a lot of opportunities for winter weather, but this could come in the form of pretty messy, uh, you know, winter weathers in terms of some rainfall, some snowfall, some ice, some sleet. It's going to be these like battle of the air masses happening in these storms where we could see a, a big amount of mixed bag events in here uh, with def different types of precipitation types happening uh, semi-frequently. Obviously, these areas average seeing rainfall more than any of the other types, but when we do see these winter type storms, it could get quite messy with all sorts of different types of precipitation. This area here across the lower portion of the east, mostly the Gulf states, the deep southeast, some of the south central states as well. This is where storms will be brewing and kind of uh, gathering energy, especially when they're off of the Gulf in here, uh, the Northern Gulf. I definitely think that this is going to be an area that does see quite a bit of activity. Again, could even be one of those years where we see some snowfall surprisingly far south, uh, but this is going to be where storms are really getting going a lot of the winter. Lake effect, that goes without saying for a lot of the Great Lakes, we expect uh, a really good shot at above average lake effect snowfall and some pretty big events up there. Huge snowstorms for the interior 
eastern states. I think that we could see a lot of systems that cut a little bit inland and put these guys in the heart of the storm, really seeing the worst of it. But compared to what's typical for each individual area, I think the area that has the best chance to see a winner that is uh, really, really brutal as far as not only temperatures, I think the worst of the temperatures will obviously be in this zone, but we could see some really, really big East Coast snowstorms, and that does happen probably more in neutral ENSOs than any other type for these lower mid-Atlantic areas straight into the heart of the mid-Atlantic and even up into New England. I think that this could be the year for big coastal systems. Definitely going to be watching for that, and there will be updates to this, I'm sure, uh, typically we do one or two more. Uh, if there's any sort of deviation that needs to be made or any slight alterations, I'll go ahead and just update it for you guys. Uh, be sure to subscribe like I've mentioned multiple times in the video. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.